This week's video is going to be a doozy. I'm going to try and explain each and every race in the Legend of Zelda series in alphabetical order in as little time as possible. I wonder how long this video is actually going to be. Let's get started, shall we? Hello there. Nintendo's The Legend of Zelda series is practically very similar to other video games. In 1987, when the first title launched on the Nintendo Entertainment System in the United States, an important piece of gaming history and entertainment culture was born. Most games, of course, center around the adventures of Link as he either saves or teams up with Princess Zelda. It's pretty much the staple of every Zelda game. However, as the Legend of Zelda games have progressed throughout the years, and obviously so has the lore of Hyrule, what began as a humble overhead two-dimensional adventure game in the mid-1980s is now a full-fledged universe complete with many different races, societies, alternative timelines, and fan theories. That's something that's to be expected with a long-running series like The Legend of Zelda. And to add to this, it can be a little bit difficult to sift through, especially when each game varies so differently from the last entry. Now here's a description of each of the Zelda races in alphabetical order, along with the game they appear in. Number one on the list is the Anuki, which appear in the Nintendo DS games Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. For the most part, the Anuki look like short, round humans, other than the reindeer antlers sticking out of their heads. Now, as expected, the Anuki prefer cold and snowy environments. While the Anuki dislike other tribes, like the Yuk, which will be explained later in this video, they tend to stick to themselves in the peaceful villages instead of venturing out into the world. Some fans of the community believe the word Anuki comes from the Inuit language of the Inquiticut in Canada, which does make a lot of sense, even if I completely butchered that name. <laughs> the next race are the Cobble, which also first appear in Phantom Hourglass. The Cobble previously ruled over the aptly named Cobble Kingdom until, for no other reason, the civilization collapsed. Their society focused heavily on architecture and mechanical innovation, which Link experiences when he goes through the ruins toward the end of the game and has to fight one of their mechanical golems named Eox to complete the seventh dungeon. Deku Scrubs are an iconic fictional race in the Zelda universe, and if you are familiar with Zelda series, you will know the Deku Scrubs for sure. And they make an appearance in roughly six mainline games, although their first appearance was in Ocarina of Time, the GOAT. I'm a bit biased. <laughs> the Deku preferred to live in forest, often hiding away in bushes to pop out at us and shoot Deku nuts at Link. In most games, the Deku scrubs are enemies, but Link has been able to team up with them more than a couple of times, which is pretty awesome. He actually became one of them in Majora's Mask, just saying. <laughs> Fishmen are a race that are pretty self-explanatory. Seen only in Wind Waker, they jump out of the water and give Link advice on the world and help him fill his sea chart. Other than that, well, they're basically just talking fish. You really only accomplish this in, or see this in Wind Waker when you're trying to 100% the map and you're trying to fill in all the squares on the map in Wind Waker. The Garo are a unique race found only in Majora's Mask, one of the darkest Zelda games to date, that is until Breath of the Wild 2 is finally released. Visually, the Garo look like spooky humans in a cape, but there's much more to them than meets the eye. Each Garo is essentially a ghost, haunting the remnants of the Akana Kingdom, which is where they lived while alive. Link can interact with these spectral warriors while wearing the Garo mask in The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask one of the best games in the entire franchise. Up next are the Gerudo. This is a pretty common race that we all know and love. They are found in many of the mainline Zelda games. The group lives in the Gerudo Desert and are known for their thievery and massive strength. An interesting piece of Gerudo lore is that this race is made up of only females, except for every 100 years when a male Gerudo is born and destined to take over as king. So far, the only male Gerudo that we know and that is seen in the series is Ganondorf himself. Gorons, sometimes known as the quote, rock people, tend to stick to mountain ranges. The race is incredibly strong physically and eats rocks mined from quarries. In the Legend of Zelda games, Gorons are usually pretty helpful and they team up with Link pretty frequently. I can think of many of the games in the series like Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, 
Not so much in the Wind Waker. Twilight Princess, they were really important in Twilight Princess and many of the other games. Oh, how could I forget? Skyward Sword. Duh. <laughs> Here's one you have no idea about. <laughs> the Hylians. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hylians are another iconic Legend of Zelda race, but there's not much to them other than they're basically humans with elf pointy ears. They established in the land of Hyrule and used to be able to wield powerful magic. Did you know that? The Kokiri tribe are an off branch of Hylians that live in the Kokiri forest in Ocarina of Time, relying on farming and their relationship with the forest and the great Deku tree for sustenance and wisdom. Another off branch of Hylians in the Kokiri is the Wind Tribe from the Minish Cap. If you've been following along in the video so far, we are at letter K in the alphabetical listing of each individual race in the Legend of Zelda series. We're going to go ahead and do three of the Ks together. Keaton, the Kikui, and the Koroks. The Keaton are basically foxes with three tails, and there's not much else to say about them really, although their mask is very helpful to Link and Majora's Mask. The Kiwi are the small, peaceful, Kiwi looking <laughs> creatures that are part plant, part animal, with a bushy tail and a plant sticking out of their heads. Koroks, they're small, they're wooden creatures, and they wear a mask resembling leaves. The Koroks are often portrayed as gifted musicians and artists and help Link out in his journey in so many of the Zelda games, including Wind Waker, and we all know the iconic Breath of the Wild. There's 900 Korok seeds that you have to collect if you didn't know. Still working on getting all those. <laughs> the Locomo, based on the word, quote, locomotive, only appear in Spirit Tracks. According to the game, their sole purpose is to protect the tracks spread throughout Hyrule from the Demon King, which is why the Tower of Spirits and Spirit Track even exists in the first place. The Mai Mai, likewise, only appear in one game, A Link Between Worlds, and look like a mix between a snail and a squid, whereas the Minish, or Pekori, are a race of tiny human-like creatures found in the forest. Moblins are reoccurring enemies in almost every single Zelda game, and have either pig-like or goblin-like features, or both in many cases, depending on the specific portrayal. There's not much more lore here regarding their origin, they're mainly just foot soldiers for the bad guys, honestly. Meanwhile, the Mogma are from Skyward Sword, and they are basically a mix between enormous moles and humans that live on Elden Volcano. The group was one of the five races on the surface who fought against Demise with the goddess Hylia. Twilight Princess introduced the Oka. They're considered an ancient race and have bird-like bodies with oblong, creepy human faces <laughs> residing primarily in the city in the sky. According to Shad, one of the main protagonists in Twilight Princess, the Oka are more closely related to the gods than the Hylians themselves, and the race has extremely advanced technological and magical capabilities. The Parallel tribe from Skyward Sword live in Lake Floria, kind of looks like a strange octopus mixed with a jellyfish, and were also one of the five races that fought Demise with Hylia. By this time, Skyward Sword rolls around, though they're serving the water dragon, Farron. Another extremely famous race present in many mainline Legend of Zelda games are the Rito, which are essentially just human birds. <laughs> I couldn't think of another description, or a better description for that matter. Depending on the game, they either lean more towards a human or more towards a bird, but the basic idea is the same. They're half bird, they're half person, and they can utilize their wings as a mode of transportation. However, in each entry, Dorito have a fairly sophisticated society resembling that of the Hylians with their own towns and political system. It's pretty cool. Likewise, one of my favorite races in the entire Zelda series, the Sheikah, are similar to the Hylians with the magic and the pointy ears, but are more secretive and also known as the Shadow Folk. They're considered guardians of the goddess, and since the royal family are considered her direct descendants, they are by default their guardians as well. The Sheikah excel at literally almost everything. Combat, athletics, style, swag, technological innovations. I love the Sheikah. <laughs> They're so cool. 
Skull Kids appear in Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Twilight Princess, and Navi sort of implies that they are children who just get lost in the woods. They carry around flutes and usually attack Link with projectiles. It's totally not cool. <laughs> Here's another one you had no idea about. The Twilight, of course. They show up in Twilight Princess. Originally a tribe of peaceful little creatures, King Zant turned them into shadow beasts as part of a evil scheme that he had set up in the game. The Twilight are descendants of the Hylian sorcerers called the Interlopers, who are condemned to the Twilight Realm because they tried to use the Triforce. Pretty cool. Because of this, the Twilight lived in isolation for hundreds of years until Zant and Link came along. Nonetheless, magic remained an important part of their culture, and positions of power were often decided based on magical capabilities. Minna is a key character regarding the Twilight. Are you guys still with me? Drop a like if you are enjoying the content so far. The Yuk from Phantom Hourglass are the Enoki's rivals, as I mentioned before towards the beginning of this video. They're a hairy humanoid species that live on the eastern side of the island, completely opposite of the Anuiki. Unlike the Anuiki, the Yuk are much more aggressive, and they 99% of the time attack Link when they see him. Last, but certainly not least, are the critically acclaimed Zora, who feature an aquatic society through the numerous Legend of Zelda games. Much like the Rito, the Zora resemble literally they're just human fish, <laughs> complete with fins and gills. Interestingly, before Ocarina of Time, the Zora were more reptilian and would attack Link. Pretty cool. Now, however, the Zora appear as friends to Link, often assisting him on his journey whenever possible. The Zora have long lifespans that last centuries, if not millennia. This is extremely apparent in Breath of the Wild because you see Sidon literally grow up and <laughs> he's still pretty young when he sees Link again in the Zora's domain during the development of the story. The Zora are incredibly protective of the water and they really hesitate to stray far from their water-based societies. However, the Zora typically still have good relations with the Hylians and the Gorons. They also tend to be rather spiritual and reproduce by laying eggs that hatch a tadpole after roughly three days or so. So there you have it. There are all the major fictional races in the Legend of Zelda series. For the most part, there were some omniscience from uh, less successful games like Oracle of Seasons or of Four Swords, but in terms of mainline success and honestly the 3D games in general, these are all the races you are likely to come across in the Zelda franchise. Be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications if you haven't already, if you found value here today. I'm Derek from Zelda Theory, and as always, I appreciate you so much and your time. Continue to be the light, and remember, it's dangerous to go alone. Much peace and love. Click on the video on the screen right now to dive into more Zelda content. <laughs>